welcome back to my channel and I hope you're doing well. I, I sadly woke up for the first time in a long time feeling depressed. In, year, in the year 2020, my star family had took my depression away as well as my fear, anxiety for a long time, but that slowly started coming back. I'm pretty sure they're panic attacks, but as I said before, I think those actually are not what they're titled to be. I do feel that it's a pounding of energy, and I hope pounding describes it the best because it's like kind of feeling. You're not used to it, of course, your higher self is, and you, you tend to freak out a little bit, which is titled panic attack or anxiety. I want to say that anxiety is quite a bit different than panic attack because anxiety is where like you don't want to go into Walmart because you feel like everybody's staring at you and talking about you. That's anxiety. So I'm going to just say panic attacks. I don't like this feeling. It's been four years since I felt this way. I'm pretty sure it's because I'm stuck in the house quite a bit uh, since I had surgery, I should say. And that, as well as having the surgery, being stuck here as well as having the surgery also is like a double whammy, I'm guessing. And it's finally caught up with me and I feel pretty low today. Um, when I'm done with this video, I might drive down the street to a park. It's very near where I'm at, so I'm not too afraid of driving with my expired temp tags. I do get it tagged tomorrow. And I'm so, so excited about that. I, today I got my first journaling book ever. I really like it, it's pretty thick. And it's just like notebook paper on the inside. And it's got quite a bit of paper in which I do like. I feel like I would benefit from journaling on more than one level. Um, I feel like it gets my feelings out that I keep in. Also, I can always look back and say, oh my gosh, you know, I was at my lowest on that day. Now look at me. I'm so, so high on life. I hope I get there again. I will also add that I think that my emotions of feeling that my star family has abandoned me because I haven't seen them in a long time. I do know they're near. I don't feel them as clear as I have, but that that really has taken a toll on me. I've, as I've stated many, many times, they were the only positive entities and things in my life. And I was always so excited to see them and to feel like I am so important that these extraterrestrials are coming to me. They are so much better than us humans. They are so much better. Of course, there's bad ones. Don't get me wrong. There's bad ETs. I had a red devil trying to get in my bedroom not maybe a year or so ago when I was in my apartment still. Um, so there's bad. There's, there's really bad. And... I haven't experienced a lot of bad entities trying to come near me. I have smelled them also, I should say, and they smell pretty foul. And if you smell, if you smell something bad and you, you know it's not within your, your dwelling, your apartment, your house or whatever, you know it's not like food or whatever and it, it just comes and it goes that's bad entities just so you know you might want to sage or mentally cleanse your house um, and as you do that with your uh, mentally cleansing it's just surrounding your house i would start with yourself surround yourself with the white light and then on the outside of the white light put the gold light with gold dust floating in just imagine it and then you just kind of work your way out and and as you're working your way out you're pushing out the bad entities and you're also saying as I expand my light I am getting rid of the negative entities in my home and forever expelling them 
Um, you can say your own little smear if you want to. I'm sorry that I'm not smiling. I'm really, really sorry. Please, I hope you forgive me. Because <laughs> I try really hard to be happy and smiling and outgoing. Today's just really difficult. And I don't know if you've noticed, but I almost started crying twice since I started this video. Well, that's one way. I'm not too experienced on saging. You can find it on YouTube, I'm sure. Everything's on YouTube. But I want to say, you know, if you're in an apartment, it might not be a good idea because the smoke detectors. Um, but you would just light the little round sage twigs is the best way for me to describe it. Um, light them up, but don't let them continue on fire. Smudge them on something like a seashell or an ashtray, whichever. And I think you just walk around your house and say the same thing I was just saying, except for, you know, as I say to this house, I, I am getting rid of all the bad entities, the negative entities, and, you know, and from this point forward, nothing but good is going to be in my dwelling. You can make up your own thing. As long as you make sure that you're saying you're expelling the negative energies and negative beings. I saw on YouTube once a woman was uh, saging her house, but she had a specific thing about corners. And I can't remember what it was. I want to say they said the corners of your house is very important. I'm not sure. But I do know with my light expansion, what I mentioned before, um... It's pretty solid because light goes everywhere. And I mean everywhere. I would also say if you're in an apartment complex and you're in one small building of the whole entire complex, you can expand that so greatly that your whole building, not the complex, but the building, well, you can, you can do the complex, but the building you're in, you can expand your light through the whole building, front, back, top, bottom. You'd be protecting your neighbors too, but I would say that in doing so, you're really protected because you just got the whole building in your light. Um, I would also add in your your talking about dismissing the bad energies is I will permanently um, bind you from the outside of my energy. You know, there's just so many things that you can say. I don't do it often, and I should. And maybe that's wrong with me today, but I'm pretty sure I've done it recently. I had just paused and was looking around and I, my first thought was, I feel so empty. I feel so alone. I am once again in a place where I do not want to be. I don't want to be this depressed person like I was in the past because it wasn't good. It wasn't pleasant back then. I was alone quite often. I met met very bad men to be my husband's. My self-esteem was non-existent and my thoughts were really bad. I don't want to go there again. I really don't. Since my awakening and seeing these extraterrestrials, my star family, made me feel so good and so wanted in a roundabout way of feeling so important that these beings are coming to me. This morning when I got up, I had this feeling that I had left and spoke to somebody and I don't know who. And I do what I usually do is I kind of scan and trying to get pieces to build the whole thing like I usually do. And I couldn't. If I did go somewhere and talk to somebody, they have blocked that. And at this moment in time, I wish they wouldn't because I really need to have something positive. Last night when I was in bed, I put, well, let me back up a tad. Last night while I was in bed, I was on my left side and my left hip was killing me because I only lay on my back and left hip since my right hip surgery, but I'm laying on my left side and a few times, this is, might be TMI, but both butt cheeks were spasming so bad that it was painful. And I had the heating pad on my right. And so I had to massage my right butt cheek because it only one I could reach. I was laying on the other one. And so at a point when I rolled over on my back, I put 
my hand on my right hip and I closed my eyes. And I hear so many people do this and it helps them. So I'm hoping that it starts helping me. But I had my hand on my right hip and then eventually my left hand on my left, left hip. And I start imagining the, the white light and I accepted any other color that came to me as a healing energy. And I imagine myself around my hips, my bones, I should say. And then I worked my way inward and I started thinking about these graphs that I've seen of tendons and muscles and the internal organs and tissues. And I'm imagining that the areas where the surgeon had sewed everything back up, I was imagining that being so healed, like there was no damage ever. And I'm going in deeper where they had sawed my, these bones down, these bone spurs, and uh, where they had sawed them down and I'm cushioning them and just imagining this light just swirling around. And after I did that, of course, my butt cheeks had <laughs> spasmed up again at least three times last night. And I'm here to say, I'm not sure why my butt cheeks spasm, the muscles in them. And it mainly happens when I'm laying or sitting. I can sometimes, but not all the time, when I have what I used to feel were anxiety or panic attacks, which is energy, I talk to myself. I close my eyes and I breathe deep and slowly. And then when I'm exhaling, I exhale negative feelings. You don't want to say I'm exhaling the energy because then you're exhaling the energy that you're receiving that you need. So negative feelings and that you accept the energy you're receiving as in ease and it will it gently start being dealable. But you just have to close your eyes and calm down and just imagine yourself calming. And if you have to go on the inside, just imagine yourself like you're looking at yourself, I should say, not the inside. You can do the inside too, but just like calm. And it's, in the beginning, it's difficult, trust me. But once you do it several times, it's like, oh, I can do this. Let's just do this. You know what I mean? Yes. I don't know if it's for everybody, but closing your eyes helps also because I feel like closing your eyes is a form of relaxation, but you might be stronger willed and you might be able to do it with your eyes open. With my eyes closed though, I can really concentrate. I don't know why I, I can't do that with my eyes open. I'm not sure. I am not sure why we are made to feel these emotions that we go through. I am not sure why some of us feel so depressed it becomes a very bad situation. I am fully aware that it's our food, the things that they put in our food. When I was a kid, I didn't meet anybody who was depressed. I wasn't even depressed. And I was going through all kinds of abuse and I still was not depressed. But... I did think that everybody was going through the same thing I was, but still I wasn't depressed. Um, back then, a lot of things were not in our food as they are now. I remember the chicken my mom would fry, and I remember digging the fork in and grabbing the meat and pulling it up, and it would be in long shreds. It's not like that no more. You just stick your fork in there and you pick it up and it's like compacted chunks is what you're getting instead of strips of juicy and i mean juicy chicken i do not know why they put all these chemicals in our food i do know i remember this news broadcast i'm not sure when it's been many years of how they were speeding chickens growing up quickly by these hormones so let's just say, I'm going to be off on the age, but I'm just going to throw this out there. Let's just say a chicken is six weeks old, and it's a full-grown looking chicken. That is the crap that we eat. And it's like, okay, I'm never going to eat chicken again. Well, okay, that's good. So what are you going to eat next? Beef? Beef is the same. Okay, you're not going to eat beef anymore. So pork? No, pork's the same. <laughs> 
So you're like, okay, then what can I eat? There's no, no meat anywhere that's not altered anymore. So I think that comes from, or not comes from, that causes the cancer, our anxiety, our autism. I remember also being very young where somebody was saying, what is autism? And they started saying that it's a new diagnosis. I remember that. And I remember thinking, how does that work? Although I was a kid, there was this adult part of me that would understand things in a different way than a kid would. Um, I stated a long time ago that being a kid, I remember riding in the back seat. And I remember thinking, Earth is a game. Earth is a school. Earth is a game. And then more information would come to me. You know, this woman was incarnated here to be a teacher so we can learn. This truck driver was incarnated here to be a truck driver so he can transport our goods. This guy is an electrician and he was here, put here for our electricity. Every single person is here for a specific thing because that's what we need. It's not like all these people are born. They don't know what to do for their life to make money. They have no clue. And then somebody doesn't walk up to him and say, well, you need to be an electrician. Does that make sense? If he didn't want to be an electrician, he would not be an electrician. So, yes, Earth is a game and or a school. We're here to learn. And we're here to make Earth work for everybody. I have to say, too, that that doesn't help me at all with my mood that I'm in right now. I wake up craving these, and I try to keep them in the fridge. I know they're bad. I know they're bad, bad, bad. But I feel like some of us need to have something. I have to watch my words because it's a welcome mat. Some of us needs to fulfill our urges sometimes. I will say that. I'm not going to sit here and say I welcome specific energies in my life because your words are very powerful. I'm just throwing that out there. Your words are very powerful. And what you say is what brings things into your life. So know that. Also, me saying that, since my awakening... I have felt better about myself than I ever have. And learning these things that I needed to know since awakening has helped me greatly. So even writing quotes about myself on the bathroom mirror or putting them somewhere or quote stickers somewhere. If you're doing self-talk as in you're looking at yourself in the mirror and you're like, wow, I'm actually so beautiful. Even though if you don't think you are, say that out loud because your words are so powerful. And over time, you will start liking the person you are in the mirror. Guys, I do now. I used to feel that I was freaking ugly and that I was stupid because my mom made me feel that way. So I had to build myself up and it took time. But I do look in the mirror now and I'm like, I'm not so bad at all. And I smile because I am finally in acceptance of who I actually am. Don't ever say that you're stupid. Say, oh, I don't understand. If somebody's telling you and giving you instructions to do something, let's just say at work. You're not going to say, I don't understand that. I'm so stupid. No. Just leave it as, oh, I don't understand that. Can you explain it on a different level? Don't ever put yourself down, ever, ever, ever. And don't put others down either. It's really funny how I started coming up talking like this and I come on so uh, depressed and sad and miserable. Um, Maybe I'm doing some kind of self-talk on the inside and I'm starting to feel better. Maybe, I don't know. This is going to be another Let's Talk video, as you know. Um, I love you guys. I'm going to end this here. I'm sorry. I keep... Going in deep thought, I'll pause and look somewhere and like go into a daze and think of things I don't know what I'm thinking of. 
I'm also trying to communicate with my star family. I'm trying to say, you know, hey, why have you abandoned me? Where did you go? Why, why, why? What have I done? Have I done something? You know? So, I love you guys tremendously, and I hope you know that. And I'm going to send all of you love, light, and peace. Bye. Ooh.